Yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Good to see you again. We've got uh, two matchups here, actually. Two matchups against uh, two different players that were both playing Law at my locals this past Friday, I believe it was. And uh, I was playing Green Purple Dofi, and I just wanted to upload these into one video because it was so interesting, like, how each match kind of differed. There was... Uh, it just felt like, you know, playing against Law can be super oppressive if I didn't have certain cards, but then it could be also, like, really, you know, really great for me if they weren't able to see certain cards and didn't high roll, you know, all of the searchers in the world. So, um, yeah, this was, uh, these were just two really good matches, and uh, we start off the first one with a chopper on turn one. I think Chopper in this matchup is just so nice. I absolutely love this card. And uh, yeah, I feel like this in combination with Sugar is just so good. It really is. And 10 cost, you can see we've got it in hand right now. Unfortunately, feels like a dead card in hand during this matchup. It is what it is, but ugh, it's just not pretty. It's not pretty, that's for sure. But with four dawn, uh, we do have a sugar. We do have the Namis that we could play, but I am gonna play the sugar, resting the Sanji, and now uh, I'm actually gonna attach two to Tony Chopper here, resting the Beji, swinging four. I'm hoping to get both, but he does use Radical Beam, and now I'm just trying to decide whether I want to go for Sanji or whether I want to go for Bej. Uh, I don't think Bedge is really going to be much of a threat here, so I'm just going to go for Sanji so that he can't just continuously get resources. Uh, my goal is to essentially starve him this match, and you know, now that I have Sugar and Chopper on board, it does feel like we will be able to do that and swing more into his board versus his life, just giving him more resources and outs if he doesn't have the searchers. So, since my opponent is taking some time here, I, you know, it makes me feel pretty confident that he doesn't have, like, a ton of great plays. It feels as though, more than likely, uh, we're just going to see, uh, we're going <laughs> to probably end up seeing something uh, pretty annoying. But he does use the chopper, and I punk Gibson resting the Beji, because now whatever he plays will just be rested automatically. So he gets the Brook into the Zoro, though. Pretty good combination to get rid of the Sugar just to get it off the field. Um, but he does swing five into the chopper instead. Just wants to um, get rid of that, but we do get to keep Sugar on the board one more turn, which is absolutely fantastic. We love to see it. And now um, I know with five Dawn up, uh, we probably could just uh, swing one with Sugar. I know it looks weird, but swinging one into the Beggie and then like five into a Zoro or maybe even seven if we want to be, uh, you know, not not play too much to the board this turn. But yeah, I'm just going to go one with Sugar. I don't really care about it being rested. You know, if it dies the following turn, that's fine. I'm more or less just looking to extract value from his hand if possible. And it didn't look like we got much, but uh, we do get the Nami down to find that guild to Zoro, which feels fantastic in this matchup. I'm really trying to draw into some counter cards because I believe that our hand is just filled with non-counter at the moment. But we do have the two events, which is going to be very, very useful. <clears throat> uh, I've always considered, you know, like, Sugar is super important into this matchup. Um, you know, I have considered in the past, like, using... <laughs> I've done it before. Is, like, using a, a spider's web to save Sugar. But with the 5k coming down here and the lack of counter power in hand, I don't really want to overcommit too much. But we'll see a 5 at life. We do choose to take this one and get the 2k counter into hand. Um, we'll see 5 for Law bouncing back uh, the Brook and then going 7 with Zoro. Definitely going to have to use a, an event this turn. Don't want to go down to 1 life too early. But we do use Spider's Web. Don't get the value out of it. But I did, I think we just drew into another 10 cost Flamingo. Um, and that's why I, I, I thought that uploading these matches were actually really interesting. Because 
in uh, spoiler alert in both matchups i do draw 10 cost of flamingo multiple times and there we bottom deck two sugars and draw into guild again so it just feels like my hand is filled with non-counter card after non-counter card it is kind of rough um i'm thinking of whether i want to attach Dawn right here because he's only got one card in hand so i'm just gonna go seven to the zoro though just to get it out of the way we don't need to give him any more cards We'll just play the Guild to Sorrow and pass it over. Uh, we know that we're definitely going to be getting some swings at life, though, now. Because he's not going to be able to fill up the board to use the ability. Uh, I'm assuming, you know, we might just see, like, a really heavy leader swing. Maybe play a card or two. Um, yeah. But he'll rest, too, for the Bonnie. He does find the, the first searcher. Gets the restand law, which is fantastic in this exact moment. Because now you could probably go, uh, what, with how much Dawn does he have left? I think it's seven Dawn left. Yeah, if he has seven Dawn left, you could probably just attach one to lead, attach one to law, and then hard play uh, restand law. He'll go six, though. I will just counter out, and now we'll see a seven. Um, I'm considering whether I want to use an event or not, or go down to, you know, one life here. It's a little scary to go down to one, but uh, we do choose to. And look at that, drawing into yet again another non-counter card and he's playing pretty aggro you know he, he decides to swing the blocker law there knowing that he's got four life but we have like th <laughs> like three ten drops in hand another guild another nami it's uh yeah yeah it's a whole it's a whole thing but at least we do have luffy into uta that's going to be very helpful here so rest the seven and now definitely going to be using that guild to swing in and um, hopefully draw into some counter power right here. So I'll do the Dawn minus two and it looks like we pick up another Nami and a queen. I literally have eight cards in hand. One of them has counter. It's kind of mind blowing. Uh, I'm going to pay the one though for Nami and luckily we do find a 2k counter with Buena Festa or Shiki. Doesn't really matter which one we choose here, but Buena Festa is usually the better choice just because if I need to find a blocker, you know, it more than likely, you know, finds me one. But I finally do give him his first life. I'm feeling like, okay, we, we've got ourselves in a, in a decent spot. I wouldn't say a great spot, but a decent spot. <laughs> and now uh, 7k going to life here. I'm really feeling like I should probably just block with the Uta, but I choose to block with the Luffy and pitch a 1k. Honestly, not bad, all things considered, but I I just know that I, I think I bottom decked one of the other Luffys earlier. So I hadn't seen many Utas, and I knew that I would see them with Nami as well as Guild to Sorrow and just drawing four cards each turn. Yeah, but... My opponent still has a lot of Dawn to work with. I know he has minimal cards in hand, but that's the scary thing about Law is that, you know, my whole hand is filled with just <laughs> massive bricks right now. I'm like, okay, this is, my hand's kind of weighing me down. I'm, I'm relying on Nami and Guild to get out of the situation. And, you know, we've got ourselves stabilized really well, but we can't seem to, uh, we can't seem to, you know, just be able to get a little bit of the counter power to maintain board state but he he swings real heavy there and uh getting rid of uta you know i don't really need the blocker uh, as we do have luffy as well as that queen in hand but i'm gonna be relying pretty heavy on that queen as well as this nami right here to try and find me another blocker find a 1k counter and um i think it was like another 10 cost or something like that so, if we do get a 1k with uh, Makino, <coughs> and I'll swing 6 again with Guild, drawing into, finally, 2 cards that have counter. So, very happy. Very pleased. Uh, still liking the position, but we definitely got to get that queen down. We need to cycle out some of these cards in hand. I don't need 3 10 costs. <laughs> that is just a fact. Uh, I will go 6 to life, though. Definitely going to take that one. But now, I mean, he's got nothing on board and only a few cards in hand. I'm feeling great. However, it still is like, it's always just a little nerve wracking because Law has the ability to have Rush Luffy with Restand. And I'm, I'm like, oh God, this is, this is still scary to me. 
you know? And I think I'm actually explaining that to him right now. I'm like, bro, this is still terrifying because you can just win. You can literally just win based off of like what card you, if you draw the right cards, you know? And, uh, you know, luckily enough, I did get a, an event card out of the guild. So we're not dying this turn, but still terrifying nonetheless. Now, um, I know that he probably really wants to put down the Luffy. He could play Luffy and just swing really big if he has like a second one in hand. And then, you know, the following turn, play it again. But I think my biggest enemy here would be like five cost Luffy and then like three little chump blockers. But it doesn't seem like he's got that going on in, in hand right now. Yeah, the first matchup, uh, he ended up whiffing a lot of the... Or excuse me, not whiffing he ended up not drawing into a lot of the searchers and i ended up <laughs> not really seeing a lot of my counter power but more seeing some of my um uh, my top end cards which i wasn't really happy with but uh we got the pieces that we needed to be able to get ourselves you know into a good spot you know the early stages of the game looked pretty great and now we'll see an 8k swing going at life uh, we did 2k 1k out of the 7k swing but definitely gonna use that spider's web to restand guild. And now, um, yeah, he's just gonna pass here. We do pick up another Shiki though. And now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I can try and go for game, but he has two life. I was like, I can more than likely uh, kill this Luffy without a problem, but he does have quite a lot of cards in hand and the blocker. So it does boil down to, you know, we need this Luffy dead, for sure. Um, I do decide, I don't know. I'm not super happy with how I played this. I decided to go seven at life. And uh, I don't think I paid the one. So we just go seven and now I don't have, um, I think what I wanted to do was go seven with guild, do the Dawn minus two and hope for a uh, sugar. But I think I might've been forgetting that I, I literally bottom deck two sugars and played one earlier. So there's only one left in the deck. So the odds of drawing into that are really, really hard. Um, but we do pick up another Uta right there. Uh, the 7k, he does give me an Otama and a, a Bonnie to counter out of that. And now I've realized that I don't really like the way that I played this. And I'm like, I should have been, I think I should have been prioritizing the Luffy because now I've given him an out. If he has Restand, Law, and he's got this five cost Luffy, he can just swing like 11k at me twice. And uh, yeah, now I, I've realized that I got to backpedal a little bit. So I go six into the Luffy. He does 1k counter out. Uh, six with Queen and then seven. And he does let it go. We're able to get down the Uta for four, and I'll just pass it back over. You know, I, I didn't want to play scared, but at the same time, like, you know, Law can just have it. And he goes 15 to life here, though. We're just going to block, and then he scoops. He, he realized, you know, like, yeah, there's, there's no win in this one. Uh, we got really lucky that he didn't see a lot of the searchers in this game. And it, it, it pretty much boiled down to uh, I was showing him how many non-counter cards I had in my hand forever. But the Punk Gibson in life actually would have came in kind of clutch. That would have been pretty sick. But um, solid match overall. It just felt like he didn't see his pieces. And that's when Law, you know, is really kind of rough to play. But then also, you know, I didn't see all of my pieces. Uh, uh, excuse me. I saw a lot of the pieces early game. But going into the next match, we do have a game up against my man Tommy here. And he's also playing Law. And this just felt like a completely different matchup than the, how the first one went. You know, the first one w felt, you know, very guided. But he sees Nami. And uh, Nami's going to end up, I think, picking up Nico Robin here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, because Nico is definitely a menace when it comes for, to me wanting to play Sugar. Or me wanting to play um, Chopper. And uh, we're just going to go 5 to life. Give him that free one. Play Nami. <clears throat> and now I know that more than likely we're just going to see that Nico Robin coming down. Maybe like a one cost chump blocker or something like that. Uh, we do, It looks like we do have the sugar in hand. But yeah, see that one that one cost chopper. <clears throat> it basically like really prevents me from being able to uh, get rid of the Nico Robin comfortably. 
But we're going to rest two here. I will swing uh, six and use Nami's effect. Uh, I'm thinking about picking up the seven cost Luffy, but I also could pick up Buena Festa. But we'll just take Luffy here. Um, if he 2k 1k's, then we also get the blocker, but it just means that Sugar's dying the following turn without getting a lot of that value that we like to get out of her. And yeah, Nico Robin is just super, super clutch here. We could see the 5k coming into Nami, um, yeah, with Nico and then pop in the Sugar. Uh, I'm thinking about restanding the Nami just because I do want him to give me a card, um, by swinging into life here. So we'll see five into life. I'm not not really trying to go down on the hand size at the moment. Um, I don't mind going to two. Two normally feels like kind of the sweet spot with green, purple, Dofi, but ooh, and we pick up a ten cost. Hate to see it, but five cost law restands the Nico Robin. Uh, we've been drawing into you know it's really nice that we've been drawing into some of our uh, event cards as well as picking up a nice little uh, what was it? Uh, sugar right there sugar's always valuable in this matchup and it gives me another chance to potentially go for nico here it's like i'm at seven i could play the seven cost luffy or i can play into the nico robin uh he's slowly getting his board built so <coughs> i don't mind being aggressive here and trying to you know whittle down either hand size or uh just some of you know some of what he's building on the board but we do end up getting the Nico Robin, which is great because that means that Sugar is definitely going to stick for a turn. We'll get some sort of value off of it based off what he plays. Uh, with three Dawn left, though, I'm just considering whether I want to um, go really heavy at life or not. And uh, yeah, I just choose to go six uh, and then I'll play the Chopper and pass. So Chopper is amazing. Yet again, you, you know, you notice from the previous game, it gives me an opportunity to... Uh, so like with this sugar potentially rest could be um, uh, could be like the Nami, it could be the law. And I do end up deciding to go with the law. You know, I definitely think that that's the more annoying of the cards. Now we might see a uh, a swing with Nami into the sugar, which I'm actually very pleased about. Uh, I now know that I will be able to swing into the Nami using the chopper. Um, potentially rest the Otama and with the 2k coming into sugar I'm actually considering whether I want to save this or not I know that if I do he's just gonna go into Nami pretty hard because it's at 3k and yeah I think we end up using the if I remember correctly I feel like I end up using spider's web here to restand the Nami since it's at 3k I kind of wanted to keep some of the card search going and you know fill up the hand with the necessary cards that we'll need. But I do kind of mull over this for a little bit because I know that the my, the rest of my match is uh, a lot of 10 cost Doflamingos that I have in hand. And that's just not really going to cut it for me. <coughs> See the five coming out into the sugar though. Definitely wants to get that off the board. Uh, plays Capone Beji here. Um, and I, also a three cost Zoro. And now we'll see the two for shambles, bring back the Nami, plays the restand law, and now everything that I had been working towards is just kaput. It's just not even relevant anymore. I'm like, oh, great. So I had, you know, used sugar to rest all of these cards, and now it's, you know, null and void because we, we really didn't get much out of that turn. And uh, I know that I could just swing to life. It doesn't really give me much other than just giving him you know potentially useful cards in hand uh yeah but we're kind of in a pickle i know that we drew into guild to sorrow uh that does seem like it could be quite nice but i'll just go three to life resting the capone here um i am gonna go six i believe oh i went six to life not the veggie blocker oh ooh, i don't know how i feel about that I don't know why I was just giving him cards here. Because I think he only had about three in hand or something. Um, but yeah, we're going to go six again. I think this might just be a life. Oh man, it is. I really think that uh, the two swings at the Capone would have been nice. Because we could have potentially got the Law rested. And then for sure been able to kill the, the Capone. But yeah, I think that was a bit of a misplay on my part. 
Definitely wanted to get the guild down though, because I have two 10 costs in hand. Uh, we're going to see a 9k at life. Uh, we'll take this. We pick up a 2k chopper. And uh, yeah, I mean, he just has... He could basically just sit on what he has right now. Shambles back the Otama. Play another blocker law. Um, he, he just has like endless opportunities. Uh, this is... This is not looking too good for us. You know, when Law sees it, it's, uh, you know, it's strong. Now we'll give him a 2K and a 1K to get out of this one. Uh, we see an 8K. I will just use Punk Gibson to rest the Capone. And um, he's going to shambles back that Otama, plays a blocker Law, gets that restand back, and gets Zoro down. Zoro's going to attach one and swing, I think it's six into Nami. Or no, I think it's six to life. Excuse me, it's six to life. And this is where I had like, I don't know, I had a bit of a hard uh, decision as I was looking at my, I was looking at my trash. I only have 2K in uh, counter in hand, but they're two Utas. And I was looking at the trash to see if I didn't have, if I had any more Utas in there. And we didn't, but then we draw into another guild yet again. So I have two 10 costs, a seven cost Luffy and a guild. Uh, just feels really really bad um you know i i low rolled this match he high rolled it uh it hurt it hurt really bad <laughs> now i'm just thinking of what i need to do um to potentially be able to survive the following turn i am just gonna go seven or excuse me six <coughs> with nami here i do pick up the brook not that it does me anything I was really hoping to pick up an Uta off that because Uta would have been absolutely incredible this turn. But going down to zero life was kind of a no-go for me. I just know that he would have had, if he had five costs, I would have lost. But arguably, I think it would have been a great choice to do that because it would have forced him to have the five cost. And uh, yeah, he didn't, if I'm not mistaken. But this is just hilarious. I draw into the third 10 cost Luffy and another uh blocker luffy and i'm just sitting here like punching myself like damn this is really happening right now but uh he is i'm gonna go six to the zoro he's just gonna let it go and i will pass after playing the luffy with uh no added blocker two up for the event so we got one blocker he's got four attacks and uh i don't think we even have any events i think like 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 i said uh five or six of the cards in my hand are just you know pretty much bricks and he finds the five cost luffy off of the bonnie plays chopper and now he can just freely shambles um the bonnie back and just get too much value with that 5k uh luffy coming down so i'll just block and pitch a 1k i don't think pitching the 1k was really necessary i think we probably should have just blocked this uh to maybe you know save that no i don't think though i don't think it's relevant either way but we're just gonna see a five at life um i gotta give him a 2k now i think that could have been the 1k brook we might see like six with law and that's where we could have potentially went yeah but uh we do see 10 here with law and then shambles um playing the restand and then game over yeah we had no counter power but I just wanted to upload this because I thought it was two drastically different matches um, against, you know, Law. It felt like that that's just the name of the game. You know, if you go up against the Law and they see it all, what are you going to do? And I, I that's what gets me kind of excited about this post-ban uh, 4.5 that we're going to be going into. Feels like it's going to be a lot of fun, very interesting matchups, um, at least different. You know what I mean? Like a breath of fresh air. And uh, yeah. Let me know y'all's thoughts, all right? I will see y'all in the next one, okay? Peace.